Now we're on to my PlayStation 2 games. Starting off with Guitar Hero 2. This here's a very nice game. You got a very nice soundtrack or song list, whatever. Um, I have not played the first Guitar Hero, and I do own the third one. You'll see that later in this video, most likely. But yeah, this here's a very nice game. I almost wish it really it worked because this has one of my favorite song tracks. Uh, and of all, out of every Guitar Hero game. But still, very nice game here. Uh, check out some of the pictures. What not. Uh, I didn't, I don't have this here guitar. I think the guitar I have is maybe the one that goes with Guitar Hero 3. Or maybe it's the one that goes with Guitar Hero 1, I'm not sure. But, whatever. Still very nice game here. Next up we have Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. This here's a very nice game. I've actually not seen uh, any Star Wars movie, and even without seeing the, the three Star Wars movies that are featured in this, I still got a pretty good grasp on what's going on. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, this here doesn't make it too hard to understand what's all going on. I mean, if you if you know at least one something about Star Wars, you'll be able to understand what's going on. So. Yeah, I mean, in the create a character mode, that was pretty fun. I mean, I've played the first LEGO Star Wars game, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't in there. Um, you know, and then vehicles, stages, and whatnot. I mean, this is a very fun game, very nice game. It's pretty short, but, you know, if, but if you want to go for 100% completion, that's where... This game is really made for those that want to go after 100% completion, because, well, there's just so much you have to do in order to get 100%. So, uh, yeah, very nice game here. One last look. Next up we have Sonic Riders. This year game is actually really fun. It's a really good racing game. Um, It's actually pretty short, but it's also very challenging. So, yeah, I mean, I have not unlocked the uh, mission mode in the game. I think there's a mission mode in the game, at least. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very nice game, very nice racer. This is the only Sonic Riders game I own, because I got this one pretty recently, so don't be expecting to see, like, uh, Zero Gravity or Free Riders in any of these videos. Well, maybe later I might check out Zero Gravity, but I highly doubt I'll ever get Free Riders. But still, this here's a very nice game. I might, I will definitely check out Free Riders, but still. So, yeah, Sonic Riders. Next up we have... Codename Kids Next Door Operation Video Game. This year game is pretty fun. I mean, if you're a fan of the show, and then this game is for you. This game's actually this game is again pretty short, but still, I mean, it's a kids game. I mean, it's not as short as like Tonka Rescue Patrol or games like that. I mean, this game does have some length to it. it took me a while to beat this game actually, uh, but still a very nice game. You get a bunch of familiar faces if you watch the TV show. So. Uh, like Night Brace, I think was his name. Uh, yeah, Night Brace, that was it. But yeah, so yeah, if you if you're a fan of the TV show, definitely check this game out. If you're not, uh, I don't know if you'd really like this game. Yeah, this game's kind of just for those that are fans of the show, but still, very nice game here. Yeah. Next up, we have Family Guy video game. This here is another good game. Uh, if you're a fan of Family Guy, which I would imagine a ton of people are, then you'd definitely like this game. You get to take control of Peter, Stewie, and Brian. You don't take control of Lois or Meg or Chris or any of the other characters. But yeah, it's still fun. Each character has a different kind of level or kind of different kind of game technique. You know, like Peter here is the uh, beat 'em up kind of style of gaming. Stewie here is the uh, shooters and whatnot, and Brian's stealth, even though he's not being stealthy in that scene. And speaking of this and this down here, like the TV show, this game also has cutaways where you play a little mini game to get extra power. Like for Brian, you get the ability to go become invisible for a short time. For Stewie, you get you know some extra parts to. You gotta be closer to upgrading your weapon. I'm not really sure where you go for Peter. Maybe you get some kind of invincibility or something. I don't know. I mean, I've gotten it in Peter's because Peter's are pretty easy. But still, I mean, this game here is very, very fun. 
Uh, if you're a fan of the TV show, and even if you're not, this game is should still be for you. You know, so just really check this game out. Next up, we have the plan. This here game, I have been addicted to this game since the first day I got it, which was like maybe a month or yeah, it was a month ago. I got this game and. I am addicted to this game. This game is amazing. I love this game. I mean, really, I don't have any problems with the gameplay. The only problems I have are with the cutscenes. And when it comes to the cutscenes, the only problem I truly have is that, you know, sometimes you'll get voice acting. The voice acting in here, it's, it's a little iffy. I mean, it could have been done better, but, you know, whatever. I don't really care. But, you know, then they take away the voice acting at some points. And, sure, the first time you see an instance when there's no voice acting, you'll be like, wait, is my volume broken or something? Because, you, because it's in, they use the, there's portions where they use like this kind of comic book style to the cutscenes, which always have uh, voice acting, and then they'll use in-game cutscenes, and sometimes the in-game cutscenes have, have voice acting, and other times it doesn't, and when it doesn't, it's kind of weird and it just comes out of nowhere but still I mean whatever this this game is very very fun I definitely recommend this game I love the plan so much I mean it's challenging there's definitely parts in this game that require you to use your brain a lot so yeah it's a very very good game next up we have a movie game open season this year game ain't that bad I mean it's short def definitely short and it's not really all that challenging um, but still it's, it's a very nice game it always sticks to the movies plot so yeah I mean if you if you love the movie or you you know you know kids that really like the movie I'd, you know check this game out it's not that bad uh, this year actual level where you get the ride the log is probably my favorite part of the entire game I think that's at the halfway point but I'm not sure Still, and yes, it does have mini games. Mini games are all right at best, <laughs> but still, I mean, they're they're not bad. They're just all right. But yeah, open season here is a very nice game. Next up, we have Cabela's African Safari. Uh, I don't really want to spend too much time talking about this game because uh, I don't think it's ever worked since I got it. So yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe I just need to clean it a bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be a good game. I really, really don't know. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. So, uh, yeah. Whatever. African Safari. Next up we have Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. This year game is actually pretty fun. I've not played any of the other Nicktoons games, like Nicktoons Unite, or whatever that Volcano Island one is, or whatever. But, you know, I haven't played... You know, I haven't played those, but this year game is actually quite fun. I might check out the Nicktoons, other Nicktoons games. I'm not sure. I mean, this game here, it's a very nice platformer, but the controls seem kind of iffy. I mean, the jumping in here, I, I don't know. It's, it's just really hard to judge your jumps and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just really don't know. But, you know, you can get a good amount of un unlockable characters and stuff, but still, there's just some things I just don't know about this game. Yeah, whatever. Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. Next up we have Ben 10 Protector of Earth. I love this game. I mean, I love the Ben 10 TV show. That was one of my favorite TV shows on Cartoon Network, but now that uh, Ultimate Alien has taken over, Ben 10's been moved to Boomerang. So yeah, I mean, this year game is very fun. It doesn't really follow any plot of any of the episodes or anything. But you still get to see a lot of the villains from the TV show, like the, this giant robot here. I think he appeared in the first episode. And then he appeared again in another episode where um, Gwen got the Omnitrix instead of Ben. That was like a what-if episode. That was like only a what-if episode as far as I'm sure. You also got that uh, bug guy, as you can see there. Uh, yeah, you get a bunch of good aliens. You get Heat Blast, Forearms, Accelerate, Cannon Bolt. Um, God, what other aliens do you get in this game? I, never, I can't really remember what other aliens you get. But yeah, this game's very fun. If you're a fan of the TV show, definitely check this game out. It's 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 worth it if you're uh, if you're a fan of the show. So uh, yeah, Ben 10. Next up we have Guitar Hero 3: Legends of Rock. 
this game here, I love this game. This game has one of my favorite uh, song tracks I've ever played in a Guitar Hero game. And as you can tell here, this is the Guitar Hero 3 guitar. So I actually have the Guitar Hero 1 guitar. I guess I got that separately because I never got guitar because I never got Guitar Hero 1. Um, yeah, this game here has the best song track out of both Guitar Hero 2 and 3. But I do have other Guitar Hero games, as you'll see once we get to the Wii game collection. But yeah, I mean, this here is a very good game. You know, the multiplayer in this game is actually pretty fun. I think there's a two-player story in this story mode in this game. I'm not sure, but still, this game here is very, very fun. You know, to play with friends or just to play by yourself. I mean, this kind of game I. Back before I got my Wii, I'd always play this game because this game had amazing songs on it and whatnot. So, yeah, very good game, Guitar Hero. Next up, we have another, maybe it's a movie game, maybe it's more of the comic, Ghost Rider. Uh, I'd actually think this is more of the comic of Ghost Rider, maybe it's a graphic novel, I really don't know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really have much relevance to the movie because, you know, I don't know, it just doesn't have much relevance in the movie. So yeah, I mean, this game here is very funny. If you didn't enjoy the Ghost Rider movie, which many people didn't, I myself really enjoyed the Ghost Rider movie, and pretty looking forward to Ghost Rider 2. So, yeah, I mean, this year game, you can still have fun with this game. There are unlockable characters, and there's one unlock char unlockable character that is actually not part of Ghost Rider story, but is a Marvel character. I think that's what Ghost Rider was, Marvel. I'm not, I'm not sure. Pretty sure he's Marvel though, and I love playing as him. I mean, he that that guy, playing as him is awesome. I don't want to spoil it, who it is for you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I guarantee someone in the comments is gonna say who the hell it is. But you know, it's a very this year game is amazing. You know, you get some unlockable characters. You get three different versions of Ghost Rider as you beat the game your first time. And there's I think three or four different difficulties. So yeah, I mean, very good game. Got Ghost Rider. Next up, we have another movie game, Iron Man. This here game is actually kind of fun. I mean, it's con it, the controls work all right. I mean, I don't have much for problems with the controls, and I've never had a problem with the controls. It's just, it just really kind of seems weird and whatnot. I mean, and the game does get challenging. I'll give it that. This game is pretty challenging. I think I'm on the semi-final level of the game, and I can't beat that because that in itself is pretty challenging. But still, this game here, very, very nice game, and whatnot, so, yeah. Uh, if you have to get your Iron Man fix, this might be a pretty good game to check out. Next up we have, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, The Beginning of Destiny. Ah, yes, the game I am currently let's playing, and if this video stays on for long enough after I finish the game, this was the first let's play I ever did, if you're checking this out after I finished it. And honestly, I don't like it. I mean, I used to kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the beginning of Destiny, but... I don't know, I mean, the game is just really, really boring. I mean, this year is, ta this year is pretty much the PS2 version of Tag Force 1, which, I don't know why it says, uh... God, where the hell does it say? It? Oh, down here. Uh, combine your Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 2 for even more fun. I don't get why that you combine two Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 2 since this is Tag Force 1. But yeah, I mean, this here's a very good... It's, it's a good game. I'll give that... give you that. It's a good game, but it's boring as hell. I mean, it's a, it's pretty much a dating sim mixed with Yu-Gi-Oh! The dating sim, that's not a bad thing, but... You know, then you got the dueling, and I like the dueling. It's pretty neat. I You know, and it's kind of neat they incorporate that even into some of today's games, like some Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds game on the Wii. But, you know, they don't have any 3D monsters, and I love the 3D monsters. Yes, they do have animations for some of the fusions, but I love games like uh, Duels of the Roses or something, where they had 3D monsters, where every monster was 3D. You know, I mean, I, lo I would have loved to see that with this kind of game. That would have made this game so much better, and I would have enjoyed it so much more. Because they don't have that, this game just isn't that much fun. And... So, yeah, whatever. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Next up we have... Alvin and the Chipmunks. Pretty sure this here is based off the movie. 
But whatever, I mean, you don't only get much for songs from the movie, and this here is kind of like a cheap Guitar Hero ripoff. But whatever, I mean, as you can tell from here, you play four notes, you know, and how you play these is with the R1, R2, L2, L1, R2, or L2. But, uh, yeah. So it's a very nice game. Uh, here's some of the songs that are on it, you know, like Love Shack and uh, Chipmunk Song and all small things and such and such. It's got, it's got a good song track, and it has some songs I wish I could have sung on some like Guitar Hero games, like uh, Life is a Highway and stuff is like is on here. Wish I would have saw that on like a Guitar Hero game, but I to this to yet I've yet to see that any song by Rascal Flatts on a Guitar Hero game. So yeah, I mean this game is pretty pretty good. So yeah, whatever. Alvin the Chipmunks. Next up we have a demo disc. Jam Pack Volume 13. This game here comes with, what, 10 games? You get Shadow of Colossus, Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves, Jack X Combat Racing, Ratchet Deadlocked, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, Soul Calibur 3, Burnout Revenge, Chronicles of Narnia, Genji Sh Dawn of the Samurai, and Brothers in Arms Earned in Blood. This game here is actually pretty neat. I mean, sure it's just a demo, so you don't get the full game. But, uh, it's still a pretty nice game. I mean, the demos make all these games look awesome. Even the Castlevania game, even though I care a lot, 3D Castlevania games suck. But still, this here is a pretty neat game. Uh, honestly, uh, if you guys want to recommend any of these games, saying like, oh my god, uh, Ratchet Deadlocked or Shadow of Colossus is and must play game you have to get it you have to play the full experience uh, go ahead and tell me that you know I'd, I'm always open to, to video game suggestions even if it's not one of these games just give me a video game suggestion I'm always open I'm always willing to try stuff some new stuff out so yeah I mean I'm always open to new things when it comes to video gaming and whatnot so uh yeah jam pack next up we have Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. This game here is short as hell. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, I actually prefer the first Fantastic Four game over this. But yeah, I mean, this game ain't bad, but it ain't that good either. There's some secret levels in the game, but the game doesn't give you any hints on how to unlock them. In fact, I've even tried looking up on how to unlock them, and I can't even figure out how to unlock them by looking them up online. Maybe you have to beat the game in a certain way. Maybe you have to find enough of the four Fantastic Four tokens. I really don't know, but still. I'd much rather play the first Fantastic Four game. Whatever, that's just kind of my opinion. Whatever, Fantastic Four. Next up we have Star Trek Encounters. This here game, either I 100% suck at this game, or the controls are other bullshit. Because... Honestly, I can't even get past the tutorial in this game. Because after you learn a few moves, they force you in a race. And if you don't complete the race within a certain amount of time, then you fail and you have to do the entire race over again. And either the controls suck or I suck. And I'm not sure what it is. This game here, I don't really want to recommend it to anyone. So, yeah. Star Trek. Next up we have... Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. This here game, I love the hell of this game. This game actually introduced me to my favorite uh, Dragon Ball Z character and, and bad guy, Harutagon. Um, and I've loved Harutagon ever since I first played this game. And whatnot. So yeah, I mean, this game's amazing. It's To me, it's better than any... Dra it's my favorite Dragon Ball Z game, really. So, yeah, I mean, this game is just really, really, really fun. I mean, I can't get over how much fun this game is. It covers so much of the story, covers so many movies, and covers uh, some... It has, I think, three or four what-ifs. You know, like, uh, what if Bardock was a nice guy? Like, if he got knocked upside the head and suddenly became nice? Or what if Zarbon had gotten his wish, you know, from the Dragon Balls? and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it, this here is a pretty nice game. I really like Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. So, yeah. 
Dragon Ball Z. Next up we have Super Dragon Ball Z. And if you're wondering why I'm only showing you the disc, that's because, well, I didn't get it to actual case. See? So I'm just going to be showing the disc. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Super Dragon Ball Z, I kind of don't like this game. I mean, I mean, it's not bad, but the controls are so goddamn confusing as all hell. I mean, it seems like this was a game that should have just been left at, like, an arcade or something. And the Dragon Balls are way too easy to get. I mean, you beat one fight, and you get autom you automatically get a Dragon Ball. I mean, that's just too easy to get a Dragon Ball. You know, I, I like to work for them. You know, and... I do like the RPG system used in this game, though. Uh, it's a very nice RPG system. You know, leveling up your characters, choosing what moves you give them next, stuff like that. I mean, you know, the RPG system I like, just, that's about all I like about this game. I mean, just whatever. I mean, even trying to transform in this game is annoying as hell. Like, like I don't even know how to transform in this game. You have to do some, like, long-ass button combination just to transform. And yeah, whatever. Super Dragon Ball Z. Next up we have Thrillville. Very nice game here, actually. Uh, I don't really try and make my own roller coasters, but you can if you want to in this game. Uh, you really get to take control of a lot of different theme parks, and I think my favorite is uh, one of the last uh, is the last park you get in the game because well, each theme park has three different sections to it, uh, or three different themes, really. And each theme comes with its own set of tr music, which you know, and which really f tries to fit it. And every design of each uh, theme or section, you know, just really works for the game. I mean, well, everything in this game is really fun. You know, you got tons of missions and whatnot. And yeah, definitely recommend Thrillville. Next up is Cabela's Alaskan Adventures. This year is actually a really nice hunting game. Uh, you're into hunting games, uh, this is pretty much a pr really good game you should check out. Its graphics are actually pretty nice. The environments all look really good. And, you know, you, just get, you, know, you, ha you get that real feel like you're hunting in, Alas in Alaska. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it can get a bit creepy, but... Or, not creepy. Uh, it can get a bit long. Um, you know, and you know, maybe a little bit monotonous, but whatever. Uh, yeah, you, know, you got some dog sledding races you can participate in if you want. Uh, I don't know how the fishing works in this game. I haven't really tried the fishing yet. I got this game a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. Uh, so this game here is pretty fun, actually. So, yeah, if you, if you like hunting games, you know, then definitely check out Cabela's Alaskan Adventures. Next up we have Thrillville Off the Rails. This year game, the soundtrack of this game is really, really good. This game I much rather, pref I much m r more recommend than the first Thrillville. Because with this game, like in the title, Off the Rails, you don't have to finish your coasters and people will still ride them. Yes, in this game you can actually have uh, people ride your coaster before finishing them and, you know, people actually more enjoy those a lot more, so yeah. This game here is actually pretty fun. A lot of the missions in this game I like a lot more than the first Thrillville. So yeah, this game here, very, very good. Much, much better than the first Thrillville. I'm not saying the first Thrillville was a bad game, but this one here is just a lot better. And I like the relationship that you can get into with this game. Because uh, you can start relationships with people. Like get a girlfriend and, or boyfriend, depending on what gender your character is. You know, in this game, and that, that's, a pr that's a pretty nice feature, wasn't it? So yeah, I mean, this is a very, very nice game. Next up, we have Code Lyoko Quest for Infinity. This hero game is actually really good. If you're a fan of the Code Lyoko TV show that used to be on uh, Cartoon Network, I'm not sure if it's on TV anymore. Uh, then you should definitely check this game out. It's it's very nice. You do get to con take control of. Uh, God, what the hell are them characters naming? And I just remember, like, odd. I don't remember the other characters. But, yeah. Uh, you do get to fight Xana, you know, and uh, this here guy. God, I don't remember jack shit about any of this. Um, but, yeah, I do remember this game is very fun. Uh, the, in, the, what was it? The sea spate? The, the sea in this thing where you get to, like, 
uh, travel between areas that you have to do whenever you're switching areas. Uh, it's, it's fun for a while, but then it kind of gets really boring. So, uh, yeah. Still a very nice game. You know, I mean, if you're a fan of Code Lyoko, or if you're not, you know, you should try checking this game out. Next up we have Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This here game is great. I, I love this game. It's one of my uh, favorite kind of like RPG-ish kind of games, I guess. Uh, it's it's kind of like the X-Men Legends game. Or, I don't really don't want to try and compare it to that. But, honestly, it's the only game I know of that I can compare it to. You guys probably can make your own comparisons. But honestly, I really, really like this game a lot. Uh, I've not tried the internet mode because my PS2 doesn't have internet. But yeah, I mean, this game here is very, very good. Uh, the story's pr the story's pretty good. I mean, everything about this game is really good. Even that, uh, how you unlock some of the characters, like uh, Blade here is, is kind of a neat way, kind of a funny way. Uh, Ghost Rider, that's kind of a neat little mi mission you can do to unlock him. So, uh, yeah, very nice game here. Definitely check it out. Next up we have Trigger Man. This here game, I'm really on the fence about it. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say it's really, really, really bad, but I don't want to sit here and say it's good either. I mean, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. That, that's enough said. It's not a bad game. It's not good, though. I mean, the health, the shooting is pretty bad, and the health packs are scattered everywhere, and they're not... And by everywhere, I mean everywhere. You'll come across maybe one or two a level. And plus, according to the game description, it's kind of pretty short. I mean, there's only eight levels. So, uh, yeah. I definitely wouldn't recommend Trigger Man to anybody, but whatever. Yeah. Next up we have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. This year game is very, very good. I love this game. It's one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto games right next to maybe uh, Lost and Damned and Ballad of Gay Tony. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love San Andreas so much. It's it's a really, really good game. I mean, I haven't beaten this game, but a lot of the missions in this game are really fun. It does get challenging uh, pretty early in the game, too, so yeah. I mean, even when it's trying to introduce some new things, even the, then it still can get challenging. I mean, it's not going to go easy. Trust me, this game will not go easy on you when it's teaching you something new. Like, when you're trying to get a big gang together for your first mission where you learn how to do that, yeah, the game won't go easy on you. Trust me on that. Even when you learn how to take over other gangs' territories, it it's doesn't won't go easy on you. So... Yeah, I mean, this game here is very fun. I'd much rather play this game than Vice City. So, yeah, I mean, even though I like Vice City's music more than San Andreas. But still, I mean, if I could get Vice City's music on this game, that would make the ultimate game right there. So, yeah, San Andreas. Next up is Tony Hawk's Underground. And, yes, like Super Dragon Ball Z, I'm only showing the disc because I didn't get the actual case, as you can tell. So I'm only showing the disc. But yeah, this year game, I love this game a lot. I mean, this year game, if it wasn't for this game, I would never have gotten into the Tony Hawk series. I mean, the vehicles in this game, they're completely optional and they control like other crap. But still, this game is pretty long. It's got a great soundtrack and everything about this game is amazing. I love the Tony Hawk's Underground. I mean, it's way better than the second Underground in my opinion, but whatever. Teach their own. So yeah, I mean... This game here is just really, really fun. So, uh, yeah. Underground. Next up we have Jack 2. And this here is a very nice game. This was actually the uh, first game in the Jack and Daxter series that I that I played. And, so honestly, it's really good. I mean, it got me into like in the Jack and Daxter series. And the story here is really, really good. I mean, you don't even have to have played the first Jack and Dax to understand the plot here. I mean, you, like, the only reason you need to play the first Jack and Daxter game is really for the beginning of the game, and even that isn't confusing. So, uh, yeah. Very nice game here. I definitely recommend Jack 2 to anybody. So, yeah. 
definitely check it out. Next up we have Sonic Heroes. This hero game is really, really good. I mean, I really like Sonic Heroes. The sound, every song in this game is really good, even Team 8 Roses. And, uh, you know, the gameplay for each is good. The only thing I don't... Well, I like how you get the Chaos Emeralds. I was about to say the only thing I don't like about it is getting the Chaos Emeralds. But I actually do like it. It's just sometimes it gets more challenging than it should be. And whatnot. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I hate challenging things. But getting some of the Chaos Emeralds is kind of a pain in the ass. But, yeah, I mean, Sonic Heroes here is a very good game. Some of the controls... I mean, there's some control problems and some glitches, but whatever. I mean, this, as it says right here, this was Sonic's first PlayStation 2 game. I wasn't expecting anything perfect, so, yeah. Sonic Heroes. Next up we have Call of Duty Finest Hour. This here, I think this was the first Call of Duty to appear on the PlayStation 2. Before that, you had Call of Duty 1 and 2 on the uh, PC. But this here game is really good. I've not played the online multiplayer because, like I said before, my PS2 doesn't have internet. And you know what? This game was made back when Call of Duty was primarily arranged around single player. Which means that this game's story is long and it's challenging. So, yeah. don't If you go into this game and you're used to the shortness of the future Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare or Black Ops or World at War, you know... You better expect something different. I mean, this game's story is longer than any of those games. Trust me. I mean, this game's story is really, really long. So, yeah. Call of Duty. Next up we have... Gran Turismo 3... Auspec? Aspec? I don't know how the hell you say that part of the name. But still, this game here is really, really good. I mean... The graphics, even to this day... they This, ga this game's graphics hold up perfectly. I mean... You cannot, you cannot play this game and not be in awe with the graphics. But enough about that. Get on to the gameplay. I mean, the game, even the gameplay is awesome. I mean, they have a simulation mode in this game. And that's basically story. Even though there is no story. There's no story, no plot. Just you getting into a bunch of races, earning a bunch of trophies, getting your license, and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, this game here is actually pretty, pretty good. I mean, I wish my copy here worked. So, uh... Yeah, Gran Turismo 3. Next up we have Naruto Ultimate Ninja. And yes, I'm only showing the disc again because, well, you can guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't like Ultimate Ninja. I like the Ultimate Ninja series. I don't like the first Ultimate Ninja. I mean, if I hadn't played Ultimate Ninja 3 uh, before getting this game, then I would have been turned off Naruto games. This game is horrible. The story has nothing at all to do with uh, the Naruto s series. It has to do with how each character relates to each other. So if you see, like, Sakura and Lee meet up, yeah, they'll just be like, you'll see your Lee go, oh, Sakura, I love you, and so or, you know, and Sakura be like, oh, Lee, I can't stand you, and you know, all that bullcrap. You know, I mean, the entire game's story plays on the relationships of the characters. It has no real plot at all. And it does contain one fight. It, there's several different stories arcs in this game. Each story arc contains one fight from the Orochimaru Saga and one fight from the tuning exams. That is it. You don't get every fight from the, from the Orochimaru Saga. You don't get every fight from the tuning exams. You get one from each. Granted, you get other fights before those, but still, this game, I just really don't like the first Ultimate Ninja. I mean, the mission mode's alright, but I don't understand why they had Ninetale Naruto and Curse Mark Sasuke split up into separate characters. That just makes no sense. You know, why can't we be able to transform into Ninetale Naruto or Curse Mark Sasuke instead of having them be abilities unless you choose them? And I think even Cur I, I haven't unlocked Ninetale Naruto, so I don't know his fault, but... Curse Mark Sasuke's fault is that you lose health uh, while you're playing him. So yeah, that really, really sucks. So, whatever. Ultimate Ninja. Next up we have Cabela's Dangerous Hunts. This year game is pretty good. Uh, it's not my favorite Cabela's hunting game. That belongs to Alaskan Adventures. But still, this game ain't that bad. You know, you got that real sense of danger whenever a dangerous animal is near. 
like a grizzly or whatever animal that is. You know, I mean, you really, you really have to try. You have to really bring in your hunting senses. I mean, I've never been hunting. I I, I am against killing animals, a hundred percent. I'll kill animals in video games. I will not kill them in real life. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, dangerous hunts. Next up, we have World Destruction League Thunder Tanks. This year game is pretty good. I mean, I never really had any control problems or any problems whatsoever with the game. I mean, it kind of reminds me of WWE Crush Hour, even though I think Crush Hour was made after this game. But still, this game was, uh, this game is actually really good. I'm not sure if there are other World Destruction League games or anything. But yeah, I mean, this year game is pretty good. Definitely. Definitely check it out if you're into these kind of games. So, yeah, World Destruction League. Next up we have Monster Rancher Evo, or Evo, which is, you know, it's it's short for Evolution. Let's just go with that, Monster Rancher Evolution. And this year game is really good. I hear a lot of people say they hate this game, but I don't. The only thing I hate about this game is how you level up your monsters. You don't level them up from battling. Which, you know, maybe some people might be used to if you play a lot of Pokemon, which I did before playing this game. You level them up from being in the circus. And honestly, that's that's really stupid. I mean, I don't know, I just really don't like that. I mean, the circus aspect of the game is kind of neat, but... I don't know, it's... I just really don't know. I mean, what I really liked about this game, and I'm, I know this is in every Monster Rancher game, this was kind of the, you know, big thing that got people into Monster Rancher, or not really the big thing got them into it, but you can actually, by using this here girl, you can get monsters from your DVDs and games and CDs and pretty much anything you have on disc, and you can get monsters from them. You know, sometimes pretty powerful monsters, too. I mean, I got... Some really, really powerful monsters from some movies. You know, and, you know, this game here was actually really... This game is really fun. If you can get past the circus aspect. So, uh... Yeah. Monster Rancher Evolution. Next up we have another... I'm guessing this is a movie game. Bad Boys Miami Takedown. I've not seen the Bad Boys movie. So, and I really only got this game because I got it for free. And I'll say I really like this game. I see some, I see this on some worst of, uh, top ten worst movie games of all time. And I don't really agree with them. I mean, I find the aiming actually pretty good in this game. The game is really fun, actually. I mean, there's a ton worse movie games out there than this. I mean, this really shouldn't even be on a top ten worst movie games list. Bad Boys Miami Takedown? This is actually one of my favorite movie games, honestly. So, uh, yeah, bad boys. Next up we have another movie game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This year game is actually pretty good. I, I'm really, I like the Harry Potter movies and the game, and some of the games. Uh, I say some, you'll find that out when we get to the Wii, the Harry Potter game I got on there. Um, but this game here is actually pretty good. You know, there's got, you got a bunch of spells and everything really works fine with the game. There ain't much fault with it. I, I don't really think it's that short. I don't know how Quidditch works because I never got to that part. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very good game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you're a Harry Potter fan, check this game out. Next up we have Super Trucks Racing. And I hate the hell out of this game. Every truck racing game I play has horrible, horrible controls. This game ain't a bit different. It's flat out loud garbage. I mean, this game is just horrible. Don't play this game. The controls suck. Pretty much everything about this game is just horrible. Don't even touch this game. I mean, if you come in contact with this game, just throw it away or something. I mean, this game is horrible. And why do I still want it? Why am I clearly touching it? Because... Actually, I don't know. Maybe I have a knack for bad games. I don't know. And plus, I only got it for four bucks. So, yeah. I don't know. Super Trucks Racing. Next up, we have Celebrity Deathmatch. This year game. I don't even want to say anything about it. This game should have stuck to the PS1 and just stayed and died there. Because, honestly, 
One char well, it does look like you get a ass lot of characters there. It looks like that because they added every member of NSYNC onto the game to make it look like a longer character roster, and every member of NSYNC has the same attacks, down right to their kill attacks, or finishers, or whatever the hell you want to call them. You know, there's no difference in any of the NSYNC members, and the game itself looks like garbage. It looks like a PS1 or N64 game, but that, even, that might be saying too much about it. But yeah, I mean... This game is just horrible. I mean, if you if you like you you have to be a die-hard celebrity deathmatch fan to like this game. I mean, one the game is short. There's only like what seven levels of the game, each with three fights. So I don't know. I mean, you know, you you guys can do the math. I ain't doing it right now. But um, yeah. Actually, that's like 21 fights. I just did the math right now. But still, this game is garbage. Still, just stay away from it. Unless you can find it really cheap, or if you can get it for free. Maybe less than three bucks. Would probably be enough for this. I got it for ten. So, yeah. Celebrity Deathmatch. Next up we have Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. This game is actually really good. I really enjoy this game. It's a very nice platformer. And it's just always very fun. I've not played the second game, and I've only played the demo of the third game. And honestly, I wouldn't mind trying the other two out. Because this year game is really, really good. I mean, you do take control of only Sly, but this year game, it's really nice. You know, it's a really nice platformer. It's got a really nice story to it, and everything about this game is really good. So yeah, definitely check this out. Uh, I do believe they remade it for the PS3. So yeah, I mean, at least try this game out, if you, if, you know, and then maybe buy it if you really like it. So yeah. Sly Cooper. Next up we have Starsky and Hutch. Yep, very nice game. I believe this is based off the old TV show. And it's really, really good. I mean, there's a time limit which uh, how it goes up and down doesn't really make any sense because honestly, if, if it was me, uh, I think more people would watch it if you shoot shit. And from this game, when you shoot shit, that isn't the main bear g that isn't the guy you're supposed to be shooting then your view viewer account which is what it calls uh... goes down and honestly if it's actually a viewer account then this show must be flat and horrible because every second you lose another person watching the show i mean that doesn't make any goddamn sense you, c you can gain more time but it doesn't make any goddamn sense that if it truly is the viewer count that you lose someone watching every second I mean, then Starsky and Hutch must be the dumbest and most boring show on Earth. But I don't really think it was that bad. I mean, I haven't seen the TV show. But yeah, I mean, other than the time limit, which doesn't make any sense, uh, this isn't a bad game, so yeah, definitely uh, check this out. Starsky and Hutch. Next up we have Enter the Matrix. I really don't want to spend too much time talking about this game because... I have never actually played it because my copy here don't work. So yeah, just one quick look at the pictures and then back of the cover, you know, matrix symbols. So yeah, enter the matrix. Next up we have Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses. This year game is really good. You can take, you can become part of either Yugi's team or Kaiba's team. You know, like a for, uh, for, what was that, False Bound Kingdom? Yeah. And it's actually really good. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a little chess game. I'm not even, I don't really want to call it a chess game. Uh, I don't know really what you call it, but, you know, it's it's kind of a neat way to duel. So, yeah, I mean, really nice. Every monster gets a 3D animation. You know, a 3D attack animation and just a 3D animation. Which makes this game, you know, definitely one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! games. Just because it's 3D animations. You know, and proves that the PS2 can handle a bunch of 3D animations. So, yeah, I mean, this is a definite must-try, a must-play or must-buy for any Yu-Gi-Oh! fan out there. So, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duels of the Roses. Next up we have Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. This year game is amazing. I love this game. Well, it is my third, it's my third favorite in the Jack and Daxter series, and I've only played three games. I'm not trying, I do not mean that it's a bad game. No, it is great. It's just that I love Jack 2 and Jack 3 more. 
But yeah, I mean, this game's great. It's a really, really good platformer. One of my favorite platformers on the PS2. And honestly, it's a really good game. It's a really funny game. It, I mean, especially um, Dexter here. He's really, really funny. Jack doesn't talk in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good game. So, uh, yeah, definitely definitely check it out. Uh, it's one of my favorite... Jack and Daxter is one of my favorite uh, game series on the PS2. So, yeah, Jack and Daxter. Next up we have Legends of Wrestling. Yet again, I don't want to be spending too much time on it because my copy here has never worked. So, just one quick look at the pictures and then move on to the next game. So, uh, yeah. Legends of Wrestling. Next up we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. This year game is really good. It's one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto games, but then again, I really I like all the Grand Theft Autos. I haven't really played one that I don't like. But yeah, I mean, this year's really good. It has really good music. In fact, the only problems I have with the game is controlling the helicopter and the boat. The controlling both of those is just stupid. I I hate the controls for them. They, they don't work, and it's impossible to master them. I mean, maybe some of you have mastered the controls. I mean, I can't figure out how to even go forward with the helicopter. And when it comes to the boat, the steering is horrible because you're going so goddamn fast. And it doesn't help that the first mission that you get with the boat is a race. So, yeah, whatever. Other than that, this game is really good. I mean, you know, you just do, like other Grand Theft Auto games, you can do missions. Or you can just pick up hookers, you can... You know, pick up really anybody and just do whatever the hell you want. It don't really matter. So, yeah. I really like these uh, sandbox kind of games. So, yeah. Grand Theft Auto. Next up we have Future Tactics The Uprising. This year game is really, really neat. It's kind of a neat concept to it. You know, you get every turn you get a set amount of space you can move around and whatnot. And you can choose to attack it. Uh, the enemies, which, you know, some, the most common ones are these here, guys. You know, and you just pretty much take turns. It's it's kind of like a board game, but not really. Um, but it's a really nice game. I really enjoy playing this game. It's very fun. And it's got a pretty nice story. Some of the voice acting is, eh. <laughs> Almost like it's, the game is better with the voice acting turned off, but maybe that's just me. Whatever. Future Tactics. Next up we have... Naruto Ultimate Ninja 2. This year game is really good. I mean, it's tw it's it's a million times better than the first Ultimate Ninja. I mean, one, you got a huge ass character selection. Two, the, uh, there's a lot more stages. In fact, I, I don't know if I really want to say a lot, but I think there's only like four or five extra stages. That's because the first one had a lot of stages. And then you've got a really improved story, which covers. Oh yeah, where the hell is this? I believe it starts in the tuning exams. Then it goes on to the Orochimaru fight, and then you get like an added saga, which kind of makes sense, kind of doesn't. Whatever. I mean, a lot of everything else, everything with this game is so much is so good. I love this game. The only problems I have is that, okay, yes, in this game they fuse together Sasuke with Curse Mark Sasuke. That is great. What they forgot is Naruto Nine Tail Naruto. But you know what? They wanted to piss us off even more and give us Taijutsu Naruto. I don't know, maybe it's just me that gets pissed off when they uh, create more than one of the same character. But you know what? They did it to other characters too. They did Sealed Orochimaru and Orochimaru. They did Byakugan Hinata and Hinata. You know, they got uh, Kakashi with Anbu Kakashi, and I do know that games to this day still do that. Which still kind of pisses me off, but maybe it's just me. I don't know. I think that's all the separations they did. But I kind of, I can understand Abu Kakashi and Kakashi. But the other ones like Byakugan Hinata and Normal Hinata. I can probably understand Sealed Orochimaru and or Normal Orochimaru. But honestly, whatever. Oh, and also, there is a mission mode and a like RPG kind of system where you can level up your characters but when you're in story mode, this really pisses me off when you're in story mode and you're in a fight that you cannot get out of you then you're screwed, you cannot level up your characters 
You cannot do mission mode because mission mode and leveling up your characters are done in the story mode, but there's so many times during the story mode where you cannot go back to where you can level up your characters or do mission mode. I would have loved it if the ability to level up your characters and mission mode were separate like in the first Ultimate Ninja. You know, where the mission mode was a se was separated from story. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I just find that would have been a lot better. I don't know if they did, that's what they did in Ultimate Ninja 3. But still, whatever. Ultimate Ninja 2. Next up we have Duel Masters. This year game is really good. If you're wanting to get into the Duel Masters series, then definitely check this game out. It's a lot... Uh, there's the, the tutorial in this game. It's a lot better in Kaijudu Masters. Is there even a tutorial in Kaijudu? Yeah, there is. But I find this one to be a lot better. And I think we stop stepping on shit. But, uh... Yeah. It's a really nice game. Got really nice 3D monsters. Every... Like you... Like, uh, Duels of the Roses. Uh, Duel Masters here has 3D animations for when the monsters are defeated and when the monsters attack. So yeah, even when they're summoned, they have 3D animations for that. And my favorite when you summon the, uh, oh god, I don't even remember what they're called. But they're like, if you have enough mana in, or whatever it's called, then you can summon it, like Ball Shock Dragon right here. Uh, you can summon it just by pushing a button, and that animation is really, really neat. You know, and this game here is really neat. I kind of like Duel Masters a bit more than Yu-Gi-Oh! Not, not a whole lot, just a bit more, because Duel Masters kind of seems a bit more, you know, it seems like you need to f do a lot more with uh, Duel Masters than Yu-Gi-Oh! But still, whatever. Duel Masters. Next up we have Bully. This year game is really good. I've played Scholarship Edition, and I think Scholarship Edition is only out advances in maybe a few extra missions, and maybe a few extra modes and whatnot. But still, Normal Bully, right here. This is a very nice game. I, I love this game. It's so so amazing. I mean, I, I don't know like, really what I could say about Bully. It's just an amazing game. I mean, I, I just don't know. I mean, if, like, imagine Grand Theft Auto set in like a college or a university. That's pretty much what Bully is. And I know a lot of sandbox games get compared to Grand Theft Auto, but honestly I don't know what else I can compare Bully to. So, yeah. Bully. Next up we have ATV Off-Road Fury 3. This here game is really, really good. I love ATV Off-Road Fury 3. I, I have played Off-Road Fury 4 and I hated Off-Road Fury 4. For one, they got rid of the free roaming. What, what the hell? Why did they get rid of free roaming? That was the best thing in in Off Road Fury 3. I mean, every, every time I went over like my cousin's house to play this game, we always did a free roam. But with Off Road Fury 4, you can't do that. But Off Road Fury 3 right here, this is an amazing game. I love it. I'm not. I don't just love it because it's free because it has free roaming, which makes it automatically better than the fourth one, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this game is really good. It's got really nice tracks, really nice courses. And honestly, this game is just amazing. This is one of my favorite uh, games to play multiplayer on and whatnot. So, yeah, definitely check off Road Fury 3 out. If you are into, if you have, like, a lot of friends that come over and want to play video games, definitely check this game out. Next up we have Strike Force Bowling. This sure game's alright. I mean... All, everything works. I mean, it's a bowling game, so really, what do you expect from it? You get a bunch of characters. Well, you don't only get a bunch of characters. You get like a few characters. You get something you can unlock, and you get a bunch of stages. You get uh, two versions of each stage. You get like a day version and a night version. So yeah. Uh, whatever. This game here is really good. If, if you like bowling, or if you're into, or if you like playing bowling games, definitely check this game out. It's pretty fun. So yeah. Strike Force Bowling. Next up we have Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, or whatever. So yeah, I mean, this game here is really good. I mean, like, everything just works for this game. I love, I mean, I love the Budokai Tenkaichi games more than normal Budokai, but whatever. This game here is really good. The graphics look phenomenal. Everything about this game is just great. You know, you have tons of fights in the story. I mean, I mean, tons. I mean, once you complete a fight, then, alright, here's an example. The Cybermen fight from the Saiyan Saga. 
Most games, you play as one character fighting the Cybermen. This game, you play as every character that fought the Cybermen in the episode. In the episodes. So yeah, I mean... Vikai Tenkaichi is a very, very nice game. If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, definitely check this game out. Yeah. So, whatever. Vikai Tenkaichi. Next up we have... Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is a really nice game. I'm not sure if I've ever played the first Battlefront, so I don't know what got added. Uh, I think the Jedis and the Siths got added, but I'm not that sure. And uh, I believe the space fights got added. Whatever. Uh, it's still a very nice game. Very nice, you know, kind of war game. It's several different kinds of modes, and every mode is just so much fun. I mean, you, you can even set up your own little, like, set of uh, maps to fight on. You know, if you ever have company over and you want to do that, or if you just want to do it by yourself. I mean, whatever. This game is just really fun. I really like this game. One of my favorite war games. So, yeah. Battlefront 2. Next up we have Dragon Ball Z Sagas. This year game is really good. I love this game. I mean, everyone seems to hate on Dragon Ball Z Sagas. I don't know why. But uh, I really like this game. In Every fight is just so much fun. In fact, the only problem I really have with it is like transforming is kind of weird, but that's about it. Everything else about this game is amazing. I love this game. You, it's, it's, you really get that feel of adventure in this game. I mean, it's the only Dragon Ball Z game on the PS2 that I've played where you get as much of a feeling as a, of adventure as you do with this game. You know, I really, I really like this game. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So, yeah. Sagas. Next up we have Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. This game is really good. If you like the Tony Hawk games, definitely check this game out. Uh, in this game, you do get to ride a bike. Where the hell is the picture? Oh yeah, I was showing the picture the entire time. Yeah. You do get to ride a bike, and as it says here, they're actually, it, the loading times in this game are actually disguised. And whenever I play Mike, if you get a really bad copy, like mine, I mean, mine's still playable. But if you get a bad one, then you know where the loading times are. So yeah, I mean, the loading times are disguised in this game. Where, you know, as you're going through an area, while the door is opening, that's the loading time. So, yeah. Still a very nice game, so, whatever. You know, kind of like how the Metroid games, the loading times are disguised. So, whatever. Still a very nice game. And very nice story. Whatever, American Wasteland. Next up we have Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Yep, the movie game. And honestly, this is one of my all-time favorite movie games. I mean, it's it's probably my favorite movie game on the PS2, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I love this game. You got a little side kind of quest where you can grow a giant watermelon, which is pretty neat. And uh, you don't, I don't think you're ever going to take control of the were-rabbit. But uh, you mainly play as Gromit during those sections. So, yeah, I mean, you can't play as Wallace, and if you watch the movie, you know why. Or if you play the game, you know why. But, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it's a really nice game. Really nice movie game. I don't really have any problems with Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Wear Rabbit. I mean, I don't find it that short and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good game here. So, yeah, Curse of the Wear Rabbit. Next up we have Destroy All Humans. This year game is really good. I love this game. Uh, I have not played Destroy All Humans 2. In fact, the only other Destroy All Humans game I've played was Big Willy Unleashed. And that too is really good. But I'll get to that later when I get to that game. But yeah, I mean, this year game is really, really good. You know, you can, hip you can hypnotize animals. You can... Uh, see, there's a bunch of different missions. And the game's always hilarious. I mean, this game's really, really funny. I mean, every level of the game, the conversation between Crypto and Pox is hilarious. So, yeah. This game is a definite recommendation. So, yeah, definitely try this game out if you can. Destroy all humans. Next up you have, or I have, Ultimate Spider-Man. Very nice game here. Uh, it's, kind of got, it's got that comic book style, and you can play as both Spider-Man and Venom, which is really nice. Uh, I do actually like playing as Venom more, but Venom's missions are more. Venom's missions are more or more difficult than Spider-Man's. But uh, yeah, I mean that's kind of why I prefer playing as Venom more. But still, this game's really neat, and you get characters from other Marvel comics, 
and stuff like you get the human torch you get wolverine you'll get to play as them though you get to race them and fight them and whatnot so yeah this is a very very good game right here definitely check it out if you're a spider-man fan so yeah ultimate spider-man next up we have peter jackson's king kong the official game of the movie this is your game uh, again my copies never work so just one quick look at the picture and then we'll move on to the next game King Kong. Next up we have Ed Ed Nettie The Misadventures. This here game is really good. I mean, if you like the TV show Ed Ed Nettie, then you'll definitely love this game. It's got all the humor from the TV show. It's got all the scams or pr and pranks and whatever from the TV show. So, well, not like from every episode, but this game does have quite, does have quite a few things from the episodes. Like when they go into a uh, haunted house or something, or what everyone thinks is a haunted house. Yeah, they do have that kind of thing in here, so yeah. This is a very good game. Definite recommendation for any Ed Ed Nutty fan. So yeah. Ed Ed Nutty. Next up we have Jack 3. This year game is really good. I love Jack 3. This is my favorite Jack and Daxter, favorite game in the Jack and Daxter series. I mean, I haven't played like Lost Frontier or whatever that's supposed to take place after this game, and I heard it was really bad. I might play it if, uh,. Any of my friends get it or something. I don't know. I might check it out. This year game is really nice. Uh, front, like Jack 2, you do, you do get to take control of uh, Dark Jack, which is right here, but you also get to take control of Light Jack, which is right there. And uh, Light Jack is mainly for platforming, while Dark Jack is mainly for fighting. So, yeah. But uh, you do take, you take control of a lot of cars, and you know it's, it's got a really, really good story. It's a really lengthy game, too. I mean, I've beaten this game, and the final boss of the game is kind of challenging. Not that much, but still pretty challenging. So, uh, yeah. Jack 3. Next up we have Zathura. This year game is decent. And decent is saying almost too much. I mean, the controls in here are pretty, pretty bad. I mean, I haven't played as the robot. I've played as the the two kids, and the controls for this game are just horrible. Jumping in this game is horrible. I mean, everything about this game is just bad. Don't don't play this game, please, please, for the love of God, don't play this game. Whatever. Zathura. Next up, we have Ty the Tasmanian Tiger Three: Night of the Quinkin. Uh, this year game is really good. I really enjoy this game. I've now played the first two Ty Tasmanian Devil games, or Tasmanian Tiger games, whatever. So I don't know what they added, but based on some of the dialogue, I think the uh, plane plane battles got added. I'm not that sure. I think either the plane battles or the Robo suit battles uh, got added, but I'm not that sure. But, uh, I mean, obviously the Quinkin got added. That that's obvious. But uh, yeah, I mean, this game's really, really neat. I mean, I don't think you need to know that much from the previous tie games to understand this game. You know, but this game here is really neat. I really enjoy tie three. And I might check out tie one and two if I ever get the chance. So uh, yeah, tie Tasmanian Tiger. And the last PS2 game, Shrek Super Slam. This year game is kind of neat. I mean, it's not based on any of the Shrek movies. It kind of takes, in fact, if I were to place it between the Shrek movies, it'd take place maybe sometime after Shrek the Third, maybe, because it has the, the Dronkies, you know, Donkey and Dragon's kids. And I think it has Shrek's kids in it. So it might take place after Shrek 3, Shrek the Third. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this game's alright. I mean, it's, it's a good fighter. It's got a, it, the story in it's you know really kitty. Uh, it's it's still a really fun game. It's really short though, so really this game would only be you know if you're a big Shrek fan and you like fighting games you know check out Super Slam. I mean it's it's a it's a neat game. So uh, yeah, Shrek Super Slam.